Alright guys, welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 10. Today it is Leonia West. And if this is the first time you've watched any of one of our guides, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. And if you have any tips of your own, put them in the pinned tips comment and people can look through that stuff as well for extra tips. But otherwise, we are at that Leonia the Lakes southern bonfire and we are heading west. <sighs> there we go. So we're heading west to the Rise Tower. So, um... I guess the tower that you can see, I don't know, don't know what else you can fucking say. But we're just heading up this uh, little bit of land. And that's it. Yeah. Nothing else uh, to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is something to say. Um, there's something kind of interesting about this tower. So, the towers in Leonia, normally you would need to have one of the glintstone crowns to be able to access them. Now you'd need that, and you'd need a gesture that you will get from Sorcerer Tops that we met um, when we first entered Leonia. Um, but for this one in particular, fuck the puzzle. Just ride the wall up on the outside and then jump to the top <laughs> of the tower. Skip the puzzle, get the reward early. Win-win. Aye. And I think it's a memory stone, so it's actually worth doing. 100%, yeah. Nice, there we, we go. Are, the other tower is only really worth doing if you have... Uh, if you're a sorcery build. This so, is true. But obviously we're going to do it anyway. But we're picking up the Cuckoo Glintstone, and that is it for that Rise Tower. Because otherwise you need, it, like, the... Yeah. Nice and easy. So unless you're doing a a no-torrent run series of question marks, that's all the time that the actual way of doing this would become relevant. I actually don't even know what the actual way of doing it is. But, right, we're heading to another Air Tree Avatar, but now we have Blood Flame Blade, which is very good for us. So we're going to take care of this guy, because this guy will follow you uh, that's appearing at us. But otherwise, we are just going to do the normal method for fighting these things. And I think I actually do this guy properly this time. So before you get too close, take your Physic, use Golden Vow, and then put Blood Flame Blade on the Katana. If I ever fucking pull it out, what the fuck? So Blood Flame Blade's cool because it deals fire damage, but it also puts extra bleed on your weapon. So that's very nice. So the the technique is you're going to roll into these guys' attacks, and you'll kind of roll in and around it. So you'll kind of head, you'll be facing its arse. When it does the slam, try and do the same general thing. And just hit him with a few attacks, and eventually his poise shall break. So, Blood Flame Blade's even better than you just described it, actually, because not only does it add fire damage, not only does it boost bleed, what it can also do is adds a bleed buildup over time effect. So, even while you're not actively attacking a boss, the blood loss effect can trigger on said boss. Not on these ones, though, because they're actually immune to bleed. Really, we're using it here for the extra fire damage, since the tree avatars are so weak to fire. So... Normally, you should be trying your best to roll into all of its attacks, but when it does that vertical slam into the ground, that's when you need to get out of the way and start running once those uh, little star starlight beam things start firing at you. So just, uh, yeah, this attack here. Get the fuck out of the way by running around and make sure to not get too close so it will start swinging at you while you're doing it. And otherwise, just keep rolling into its attacks and hitting them with a heavy, or indeed, you could probably have just been ground slamming this thing the whole fucking time. Uh, yeah, you probably could get away with that, actually, yeah. Um, no, I'm on the way to this, oh. I was going to say, on Go the on. way to this, you did kill an enemy. Now, that's a Erd Tree Guardian. Do you have the drops for those enemies? Uh, yes, so they can drop the Guardian Sword Spear, the armor set, which being the mask, garb, uh, the garb, full bloom, bracelets, and greaves. They can drop golden centipedes and tarnished golden sunflowers. Thank you, thank you. So now that thing's dead, we get the rewards from it. As always, it's Crystal Tears. This one we got, I'm not sure what that top one was, Cerulean Bubble Tear? I think so. And the Ruptured Crystal Tear. I can tell you what the Ruptured Tear does. Um, that makes you explode. Um, yeah. You, put, you, put, <laughs> you can actually get two of those, and if you stack both of them, and then also stack some holy damage buffs, like the Sacred Scorpion Charm, you can make that thing hit insanely hard. <laughs> So, uh, we're following the cliff edge around. Now, we also got Sword Stance from that Scarab, and Sword Stance is actually quite good. Um, you can you can use it as a replacement for Double Slash. Double Slash 
is insanely good put on a curved sword. Like, so underrated, I think. No, I never hear anybody talk about it, but it's fucking amazing. And we do use it a couple of times in the guide. But now we are at... Uh, this is Road's End Catacombs? Correct. Yeah, Road's End Catacombs. And if I'm remembering rightly, this is another Imp Catacomb? Yeah, yes, they yes. are. Yeah. <laughs> ah, my old friends. I'm so happy to see you. Now, um, just to make a point, when it comes to those Erd Tree Guardians, which was that one singular guy that I killed, they can drop the Guardian Garb in brackets full bloom. Now, I, only some of them have it. I can't remember if, like, there's a specific location that the full bloom ones are. Yeah, that is correct. So, there is the Erd Tree Sanctuary site of Grace inside Landell, the Royal Capital. Now, using, just to make a point, using Mogot Shackle there, um, breaks all of the illusory walls in the area. So everything that was surrounding you, everything in nearby rooms, um, all of them get triggered when you use that. It has the same effect on those that it has on the flame pillars, which is a nice bonus. Um, but the Guardian Garb in full bloom, which has the effect of making your red flasks stronger um, while equipped, can only be obtained from outside the Erd Tree Sanctuary. Um, inside the royal capital which means that after a certain point in the game a certain point in progression you lose the ability to obtain that so if you really really want it you have to farm it when you have it available to you aye so thanks for that um update what we're doing killing imps that's pretty much all we're doing currently uh picking up items uh we got the watchdog staff we've got a human bone shard it's nothing nothing of particular note frankly and then we're just continuing on this is uh, definitely one of the less good catacombs i'd say another filler dungeon yeah yeah it's a bit fillery i like I, they, I, they tried a thing it's just it's not good enough because yeah. it just feels like you're going through a chalice dungeon but even less interesting actually it's, some of them are some of them can be slightly more interesting but, uh, yeah, so watch out for these imps. There's three in this room, so you might end up having a bit of a hard time. Three imps and no money. <laughs> Why can't I have three money and no imps? <laughs> Should anyone be able to summon them for every boss? Uh, um. So that was the real Lucaria Soldier's Ashes. Um, it's not the imps, so who gives a shit? So as you can see there, we triggered a trap as we were on the way out of the room. Um, we didn't trigger it on the way in, so take care of that. But the only reason we didn't trigger it is because we knew it was there. So as you're on your way into that room, just be aware that there is a trap in that corridor. So try not to get hit by it. You can just dodge to either the left or right, and then you've avoided the trap. But now we are on to the boss, and this one's kind of a kind of a fun one. I quite like this. Oh, I cannot remember what this boss is. Spirit call a snail. Oh, okay. So the way to do this one is uh, there should be like a just avoid this guy, right? Just don't even bother fighting him. There's a bit, there'll be like a glowy bit on the ground, so you just want to hit the glowy bit, and uh, that'll kill the snail. And then you want to get to the next glowy bit and do the same thing until this thing fucks off because um, you ain't fi you ain't winning against this Crucible Knight, okay? So just don't bother and it'll just respawn another one anyway. So uh, find the glowy bit and start attacking it. Oh god, panic. You can see the <laughs> ground slam not doing anything because we didn't have any blue, so there was no AoE on it. But hilariously, because of the, the crazy input reading that Crucible Knights had, he just immediately went for us as, as soon as we took the blue yeah. flask. Because <laughs> he wasn't attacking us. As soon as we drank that blue flask, he was fucking in on it. And that's how you fight that boss. And now we're going to warp back to the, like, the start of uh, this place. And I think we... Okay, yeah, we level up a little. Oh, we don't level up. Never mind. And uh, now we're just heading north. Uh, the next the next thing will, will be Edgar's quest, or I guess Edgar slash Arena slash Hieta's quest, I guess. Uh, so just avoiding all these bats, and we're just heading into the the forest, I guess. 
think this forest will be the first time you've encountered the Volga Militiamen enemies. Uh, or do we go to Edgar first? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Edgar first. I think we encounter the Vol Volga Militias in the the Bell Baron cave, I think. No, that's that's later, that one. That's on altar. Oh, I think we I think we were thinking marionette soldiers actually. So when it comes to Edgar, this is the guy that drops the Banished Knight Halberd. So uh, this will be a plus eight weapon. So it's kind of cool if you don't have that already. And then there's a it whole also... bunch of raw meat dumplings as well. Some shit's going on here. It also comes with the spinning strikes Ash of War attached to it. So if you want that as a reward, you have to remove it using the whetstone knife at a sight of grace. So that if you decide you don't want it and you sell the upgraded weapon... Um, you don't you lose still have Ash of War. War. Yeah. So here, uh, now we've killed Edgar, uh, we're now going to come back here and give uh, give her a, another Shabriri group. Walk away from her a little bit. She throws up. Um, get a nasty dialogue line. Actually, that. did we give her a Shabriri group? I think we just told her what they are, right? After giving her one, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Because you obtained one for defeating um, Edgar. Right, right. So, she's still all in on Shabriri grapes, so we just exhaust the dialogue, and that's us. We're back at Edgar. She's like, you know what, fuck it, in for a penny, in for a pound. I've had three of these fucking things. I ain't stopping now. Like a I'm good not going to suddenly become a vegetarian. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> because now I have a moral objection. <laughs> so we're headed north to one of the funniest ever jails. Uh, our build is so geared towards killing this thing, it's so funny. And this is uh, Troll Knight Balls. Uh, someone was having some fun when they named this guy, weren't they? <laughs> Aye, so this guy, like all the other trolls, has glass ankles, so... Um, just do what we're doing, take the Physic, Golden Vow, Blood Flame Blade, and uh, just start ground slamming. Two should put him on his ass, and then just uh, just start swiping. And it will just get removed from existence. Poor balls. I mean, you were slashing up balls as balls. Um, <laughs> that's bound to not feel good. And that gives us a uh, Great Blade flat Phalanx. Speaking of uh, boss drops, since we didn't mention what the Spirit Caller Snail gives you, um, you get the Glintstone Sorcerer's Ashes from it, but we were out of that cave so fast you didn't even see it <laughs> pop up. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So we're headed along to this little... Uh... It also, Glintstone Sorcerer's that dog shit. But uh, heading along to this little bit of uh... island, and there's one of the uh, one-shot scarabs. So we're just going to Hit it with the bow, and that'll be us. So now we're on a dragon fight, and this is actually one that we have to fight. Oh no, we don't have to fight it. it no, you don't. The... You can no, just walk no. past it, pick up the item, and leave. You don't have to so kill this guy. We are going to put on the magic defense talisman, and uh, we're also going to use Latil the Headless for this guy because the imps do not stand a hope in fucking hell again. <laughs> Surviving <laughs> no, against this. Really. Um, spirit ashes in general aren't great versus dragons. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just need like the even the mimic one. kind of struggles. <laughs> it's true. It, so we're just going to use the tankiest one we have to make an amount of a distraction whilst we um, do what little we can. Now, again, you can come back and wait until we have the proper method to deal with these dragons, just like the Black Knights, just like other enemies. Uh, you can just fight this later on once we have the equipment. But otherwise, we are using uh, Poisonous Mist to get this thing poisoned for a little bit extra damage. It's actually not particularly great. It doesn't really do that much damage overall. But the best thing we can do, the best thing we have in our arsenal, like with Agil, is just using Bloody Slash on this thing's face. But there is a wide, wide open area to fight this thing. Um... So we're going to be utilising Torrent as much as we can. 
But like most dragon fights, this is a pain in the ass. Now, something I will say is while Bloody Slash is very effective versus the dragons, lets you hit the head quite easily, um, there is a caveat to that, and that is that Bloody Slash does deal damage to you when you use it. So be yes. aware that if you have, say, the Bubble Shield active, using the Bloody Slash will pop it. Um, you'd be good to stack it with the health regeneration physic, because then you could be regening the damage that Bloody Slash will deal to you over time. So just keep in mind that that's something that may prove detrimental if you are using it throughout the whole fight. Yes, so just keep an eye on your health. So hopefully you can connect keep an eye on what it is that we are doing but like all dragon fights the ai is like shitty and bugged so if he flies out far enough he will just go back to his original starting point uh luckily he doesn't gain all the health back so that is good thankfully they managed to not totally fuck that up but yeah as you can see this guy can go out a long long way and as good as bloody slash is i have no idea how he hit me with that fucking hell but as good as it is it's still not the um, Spectral Lance on the Great Lance, which is the amazing, 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 amazing method for fighting these things. But uh, you're welcome. Eyes, yeah, you are welcome for that. You're welcome in advance, because once you find out about this, you are never fighting these things the same ever again. <laughs> no, never, never. Um, so I, I and for some reason Bloody Slash seems to be doing like diminishing returns. It's like it's doing less damage over time. I don't know what the fuck is going on with it, but I just avoid its fire attacks. That should go without saying. Um, but you can also get in like a cheeky hit with a bow because I could not be arsed fighting that thing any fucking longer. But hopefully you're able to take in essentially what we're doing. But the dragon fights you just kind of need to get a feel for them. Honestly, is there's only so much you can say how to fight the dragon. I can tell you how to hit it with Bloody Slash, but otherwise with its attacks, you just need to get a feel for it. But behind the dragon is the Glintstone Key that lets us get into Rail Lucaria. But we're not going to go there quite yet, but that is how you get it. You grab the key from there, you go to that big blue gate, and the key will let you get in. So heading further north, uh, there's a gazebo with some Smith and Stone 3s in it, and there's also this Grace. And now we are going to be heading to... What is it again? It is Academy um, Crystal Cave. Yeah, the Academy Crystal Cave. And I think you need some stone sword keys to get into this, but if you've been following the guide, you should have plenty. Correct. Correct. Um, now, there are some notably tough enemies in here um, in the form of a battle mage, um, as well as a few twin sage sorcerers. Now, they are just tanky enough I think to not die to a single ground slam or not die to a single bloody slash because we were here testing this for a while yeah we've done multiple runs of this now obviously just to get a good run it's not extremely difficult but their magic attacks can pump out a lot of damage if you get caught out with it so just be careful which is why we're putting on the magic defense talisman which is why uh, you know we're switching back to ground slam and we're going to be taking our time because the Twin Sage Sorcerers, which is the guys that have the double head thing, uh, they're the ones that pump out a fuck ton of damage. The Glintstone Sorcerers are fine, you don't need to worry about them, but it's specifically the guys with the two head helmet. So, and just it, to... In this dark cave, it is hard to tell which is which at a distance. Yeah. You can only really tell when you get close enough for them to hit you with the magical shotgun. So, he yeah, was just not, up there. not quite enough for one ground slam which is one of the few enemies and it doesn't even pancake they just they go in the stunned animation so i uh, obviously it looked very easy what we've done there but if you know if you don't fight them kind of one-on-one -on -one and you're fighting one while the other one's shooting at you you're really gonna have a bad time if it gets you with that fucking main spell it's got so here's another one um we're not taking any fucking risks we're gonna wait till we get an opening And get yeah, in that, that backstab. The magic, the magic shotgun. You really don't want to get hit by that because it fucking hurts. Hits with his fucking wee book. Prick. I'm going to teach you a lesson. So there's a stone sword key, which is cool because we just used a stone sword key, so it's nice to get him back. But now that's kind of the hardest bit 
done. The boss is hilariously, if you put five of those uh, twin sage sorcerers in a room, it's harder than the boss. We're about to fight. But, um, yeah, so the if glitch you just put two imps in a room, it's harder than the boss. This is true, actually. So, uh, yeah, there's a battle mage. So we need to take care of that. Now, while they can't drop their armor set, because it's dropped by one of them specifically in the strangest place possible. Um, yep. They can drop their stone club, which is yes. very, very good at breaking stance. So uh, if you do get one of those to drop, it's nice. Now, we hit a little bit of the, the surrounding cave wall, because it's an illusory wall, so that allows you to get here and get the crystal staff. And um, thank God it's a battle mage and a glintstone sorcerer, not a battle mage and a twin sage sorcerer, because that would have been uh, probably quite a difficult encounter otherwise. But the glintstone sorcerers and twin sage sorcerers drop the same thing. That's the real Lucarian robe, the sorcerer's manchettes, sorcerer's leggings, and academy glintstone staff. So, aye. The headpieces you get later on as individual pickups. So here we are with the dual crystallian boss. Is it one, one wasn't hard enough, apparently. Um, so you kind of want to... Three isn't hard enough. No, no, no. So, Aslam is, like, probably the best thing for fighting these things. Maybe Lion's Claws, theoretically better, but you want to try and... This thing can put out a little bit of damage, so you just want to be slightly careful of the Sorcerer. Thankfully, they updated the AI for these guys. If you're inexplicably playing this game unpatched, these guys are actually hard because they all attack you at the exact same time and don't give you a chance to recover. But otherwise, just kind of split their aggro, take care of the... one of them. Uh, you probably take care of this one first, actually. Fuck it, it literally doesn't matter. Hit them with your bossy, and uh, there you go. Now, now something we... to note, actually, is when yeah. we enter this cave, we put on the magic defense talisman. Oh, we already have it on that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what we'd replaced was the Radigan Scar Seal. Now the reason for that is because Radigan Scar Seal lowers your defense um in exchange for raising your stats. Now if you just swapped out the um spell drake for the Adri's favor, A we might have been fat rolling because the Adri's favor gives you extra carry weight, but B we'd have still been taking increased damage yeah while trying to mitigate it. So there isn't really a synergy there. So Whereas with Terra the setup Magica. that we have on, it works. Um, Terra Magica, yeah. great spell. Um, casts a little seal on the ground, boosts all the magic damage you deal while standing in the seal by 20%. So that's spells, um, magic grease will be increased in damage, crystal darts will be increased in damage, um, ashes of war that deal magic damage will deal increased damage, so on and so forth. So we're heading back to Edgar's uh, grace, and now we're just uh, heading north but yeah, in addition to the extra damage that we would be taking, it's just a little bit extra damage we take for Radagon Sword Seal, but those Twin Sage Sorcerers pump out so much damage that it's extremely detrimental, especially getting hit by one of their spells with the seal on. So just there's another reason why we switched it out. But we're just uh, running into these uh, this kind of rocks or whatever. There's another one of those singing bats. So we're going to kill that, get a bigger, uh, a guaranteed big rune, and then we're moving on. Here we are at the next grace. There's plenty of graces scattered about in Leonia, I will say that. I think there's 57 of them in total. Fucking hell. It's just not 57 <laughs> that across the entire game. No, it's 57 in just Leonia, but that does include inside Ray Lucaria, inside Carrier Manor. It does include the Study Hall, it does include the Moonlight Altar. Um, so, moving further on, there is a shield here. It's a jellyfish shield. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but there is a little bit of a camp coming up here, and this camp can actually, at least it proved up a bit of an issue for me, so we're just going to grab this rune arc, there is a chest there, don't worry, I do see it, but there is, as far as I'm aware, in that chest is a, a mid-mediocre shitty item, and if you try to open it by running past everything, uh, you're just going to fucking die. So uh, don't bother even opening that chest because it's not worth it. Um, and it's not worth fighting the enemies in that camp because you don't get anything for doing it. So just ignore that chest. That is the official stance of this guide. Now, 
coming up, there is indeed Ray Lucaria soldiers, foot soldiers, and cuckoo knights. So they can drop their armor sets, they can drop the weapons that they're wielding. Um, aye. So this is us heading up behind the camp, effectively. There is also a pumpkin head in this area, so just be wary of that. He may this try and true. sneak up on you, because despite being big, he is quiet. Oh, also dogs. They really did just want to stack the deck against you when you come to this camp. Yes, yes. So in this, so the actual things in this camp, so there's an Albanoric blood clot, which is a crafting item. Epic. Uh, there's a Cuckoo Knight as well. There's a lot of strong enemies or at the very least annoying enemies in this area. So we literally just came up here, grabbed that smith and stone four, grabbed the blood clot, and we're just out of here. That is the only thing in that camp, and yet those cuckoo knights, the trolls, fucking these fucking things, real carrier soldiers, a pumpkin head, dogs. What an insane encounter for nothing, basically. Cool little view there. But heading up around the campsite, what we're doing, we're now at the four belfries, and uh, this is an area that uh, there is. So, despite being four of them, there's only three teleporters. Uh, I think I think that's the case anyway. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, you need something called a. Uh, oh fuck! What's the key again? Imbued sword key. Yes, and I think there's one here actually. Yes, so we can use these imbued sword keys, there's three in the game, one here, and we use them to activate the teleporters and then they take us to a little a little individual section that's kind of cut off from three different areas in the game. So this is the only way you can access these areas, is by these imbued sword keys. Putting it in here and then it activates the teleporter. So we're just going to activate this first one now, and this is going to take us to the starting area. Recipes and now we're going to get our revenge on this fucking grafted scion. Which, I mean, it given is... the amount of gear we've got, the options we have, the blood flame blade, the the golden vow, the physic flask, I mean, this, this boss is a joke. Yeah, we're more than equipped game. for it. It's totally oh, yeah. fine. So, aye, right, we're just going to start fucking... I was going to say, we're going to start wailing on it. Actually, we're going to start with him wailing on us. But, I mean, look, that was an insane amount of bleed build-up for, like, three hits. God, that attack's really obnoxious. And yet, didn't kill you, because you're now a significantly higher level, so your passive defenses are a lot higher. Ground slam doing meaty damage to it. Yeah. There's the scream. And the boss and it's is dead. dead. Easy peasy. There we go, we get his uh, sword and shield. So you really don't need to fight this thing at the start of the game. Because it's not a kit. It's not like the other Souls games where if you fight it at the start of the game, you get like a better or a different weapon or something like that. Nah, you just come back here and you just get it. So just don't worry about trying to fight it right at the start. And if you come up here, this door is now open. We can get the Stormhawk King, which looks like an Asher War Summon, but it isn't. That one is, though. Aye. Um, Stormhawk Dean will give you a little buff when you summon it. Um, and the Stormhawk King is actually a key item, and it's something that you give to Nephili Lou in the round table. Aye. So now we are, yet again, just running past this encampment. Because fuck this encampment. And we'll be and, coming uh, up to another carriage. Yes, here, so... The carriages, again, are surrounded by wandering nobles and more rail carrier soldiers and stuff. So just to quickly go over, the wandering nobles can drop can drop the their armor sets, uh, they can drop the weapons that they're wielding, and the, uh, I guess we've been over the rail carrier stuff. But um, we're not going to bother fighting any of these guys, we're just going to in and out, hit the troll, open this, and fucking get out of there. We're not fighting 50 enemies. You can fight him if you want, we ain't. Our time is more precious than that. And you know what, we know that your time is more precious than that. Maybe other worse guides would have sat fighting all of them, but we're not going to do that. But um, 
so we're kind of going to come through here. Hopefully you can kind of follow this. It's sort of hard to really describe what this is, but there is a somber smith and stone tree, and now we're just going to descend down to the beach. Warming stone? Fuck. Throwing daggers. <laughs> You'll get one eventually. Throwing I've a got a couple. <laughs> You'll hit the balls out. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, heading into the lake, there is another mass grave, and you could use the heal miracle to just kill these guys, but they're not really that big a deal. They do No one near as threatening as their royal revenant cousins. Nah. But yeah, now, if it gonna... summoned, like, ten royal revenants... If it summoned it's... ten royal revenants, we wouldn't be doing this part. I'd say avoid it, and then contact yeah. FromSoft for a fucking refund. <laughs> The only thing that would be worth fighting through ten royal revenants is, I don't know, the rune of death. Like, sure. like it would literally have to give you access to the end of the game, like for it to be <laughs> worth it. So yeah, just to reiterate, these little guys will die a heal miracle, or at the very least take a lot of damage. I don't know if you'll kill them, but I think you probably will kill them a heal miracle. I think it does kill the small ones outright. Actually, yeah. But yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, shitty gold runes in this part. I kind of wish I sped this bit up, but fuck it, we ball. So now we're done there, we are heading further into the lake, and there's another gazebo with <sighs> Smith and Stone 3. Question mark. Yeah, but how many of them? Look, nobody could ever tell you that. I think it's three of them. <laughs> One. Three Smith and Stone 2s are both wrong. Well, you're half wrong. Half wrong is still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is, we don't grade on a curve here, it's a pass-fail. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can see a grace to our right, but there is some of these balloon motherfuckers, so we're going to shoot these down. Uh, get some runes, and then we'll head to the Grace. There's quite a lot of runes. Like, as that's five uh, golden rune sixes. That's not terrible. Well, not when you're only spending, like, one arrow per Aye. balloon. That's a good, like, good return on investment, that. It is, it is. Warren Buffett absolutely approves of that return on investment. But <laughs> That's just good now... business. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to rest at this, Grace. And now we're coming up to another rise, quote-unquote, puzzle. Um, it's another one where you have to hit some uh, some turtles, I think. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, these ones are a little bit better hidden than the previous ones. Although Aye, they, none of these are invisible. Try. So, <laughs> so uh, read this. It should uh, activate it. There's also a spawn already. bunch of ghostly enemies as well. Yeah. But they're such a non-issue, just don't even worry about them. So, there's one off the side to this cliff edge. Um, I'm just kind of trying to find it. You can't... Yeah, there we go. So, you can use the bow from on torrent. I get, the bow is just paying dividends. Even if you're a strength build, just get a fucking bow. It's going to make your life easier. Um, I mean, if you're a strength build, get a great bow. That's just fun. To kill, to kill these little... Uh, so, there's that one on a tree. And then there's one kind of here. Yeah, there we go. This one's just chilling. That one's easy to find. But there's one off the edge of the cliff, one on the tree, and then when you kill all three, you can enter the rise and get probably a memory stone, because it normally is. I think this one has a memory stone. Yeah, I think you're right. Are there also eggs in this one, or is that in a different tower? Eggs? Yeah, slumbering eggs. That might be in the tower that disappears, though. There we go. Yeah, memory, stone. memory stone. And, uh, right, straight back to the round table hold. And I think we're probably going to upgrade our weapon and or level up. We'll probably be giving the Stormhawk King over to Nephili as well. While we're here. Yeah, probably. So we can level up uh, our katana to, like, the second leveling stage of the Smithing Stone 4 portion of that and uh it looks like we leveled up the bow a little bit and we could just i there's almost no reason to level that up but fuck it it's cheap and right there 
So now we are going... Oh, I thought we were going to Nefeli. So it would look like we're going to sell our runes because it's much, 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 much faster than popping them in menu. And I think we're going to level up. And I think we're probably... I think we're leveling up endurance currently. <clears throat> I was right. So that's 24 endurance, I think. Can't quite see from here. But now we are heading back to uh This is this is the no, so this is northern Learning of the Lakes. And this is the one that we got from the teleporter. Um that teleported us to the map fragment. But otherwise, I mean you can just run here anyway. But now we are King's Realm Ruins. There's a couple items here. And um just ignore the enemies. But there's a Sacramental Bud. Ah, Fuck! Again, there's no partial credit. It's a pass yep. fail. <laughs> uh, I need to take the gear again. So yeah. <laughs> that's uh, a reset. Um, yeah. So there's this uh, invisible staircase, and then there's a pumpkin head boss down here. No, 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 it's a revenant boss. So we're gonna get our heal miracle out. We're gonna take our fucking. We're gonna take our physic flask, and then we're just gonna spam this shit out of heal and hope this thing dies quick enough. Once heal is a massive area, by the way, so even aye, if it dashes aye. away from you, there's a good chance it still hits. And that is how you beat that boss. And you get the and... frozen needle as a reward. Yes, which is quite a cool rapier. Built-in frostbite build-up. If you charge its R2s, it has little projectiles on it. Um, if you partially charge an R2 and backstep, even the backstep attack has a projectile, which is cool. So that's another invisible wall, but you could also, if you're so inclined, do this. Cool, I guess. Um, Stops the enemies peppering you if you're standing at the grace. And there we are, at the next grace. So I guess we speak to EG a little bit, so you can talk about EG. EG is the second blacksmith in the game. He's tied to uh, Lady Rani and her entire quest chain. Um, he's also got associations with Blythe and an NPC called Celibus. If you tell him you know Blythe, that gives you access to an item in his inventory called the Carian Filigreed Crest. Is a very useful talisman. He sells somber stones one through four. So if you wanted to use a somber smithing stone upgraded weapon, you could get it plus four immediately by coming here. Um, he can also upgrade all of your weapons for you, just like um, Smithing Master Hugh can. But we're finished with him for now until we progress on to Rani's quest. So for now, just avoid the blue arrow rain and head over to this left hand side here. And we're heading for another mass grave, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah. This one I think is protected by rats, question mark? <sighs> I really hate how much they, like, have enemies defending this area, and it's like, bro, this area is like 5,000 souls. It doesn't matter. Like... <laughs> <laughs> they just like, make it as inconvenient as possible. <laughs> yeah. You need to put so much effort into picking these things up, and it's like, Jesus Christ, it's barely worth it. So, now we are kind of following the cliff edge to our left, and, uh, well, not cliff edge, wall, bit, whatever. Uh, just follow where we're going, and uh, now we are at Caria Manor. Now, we're not doing this just yet. Uh, I don't even think we do it next. Uh, yeah, no, we don't do that next. But, yeah, let's ca carry a mana. But we are going to grab the grace. Might as well. There's a little bit of time later on. Oh, shit. Something to mention is the troll knights in the forest can drop the troll knight sword. Uh, they can, but there is one that seemingly drops the troll knight sword guaranteed. But that, that does mean true, you can actually. get two of them per playthrough. That you know, I did forget about the one that drops it seemingly guaranteed. Well remembered. What the fuck? Okay, so... Now, as much as we ground slammed that thing, I just didn't have Storm Stomp equipped, right? Use the dagger, use Storm Stomp, and then get Horfrost Stomp. Now, we want that. Horfrost Stomp is great because it's the first Ash of War we can put on our katanas that can give it Frostbite damage. 
So not only are we building up bleed, we're building up frost. So that's two fucking stats effects, baby. Uh, so very, very good. Imperative to our strategy for uh, free damage, which is essentially what our, this build is, is just free damage. Just overwhelm the enemy with status effects. And uh, we just have Hunter's uh, health and endurance to go along with it. So now we're heading back into the lake. We're heading further north into the lake. And there's barely any items in this part of the, the, the like map. It's kind of crazy. So we're picking up the Soporific Grease. That is, uh, it can put sleep status effect on our weapon. Um, only kind of useful against a few enemies. The enemies that it is good against, admittedly, are very, is very useful for, though. So don't, don't get us wrong. But the problem with having the sleep status on your weapon is if you put it to sleep and you then accidentally hit it again in the same attack string, you'll just wake it up immediately. So it's kind of, you have to be careful with it. I mean, it does still provide a little bit of a stun slash stagger effect. True. So it still has its uses. So picking up the Intelligence Knot Crystal here, which is kind of hidden away in this sort of corner area. And you did see a big hand enemy. And it's horrifying. There's loads of them in Carrier Manor. Just ignore it for now. Uh, they are fairly strong. But it can be flattened with ass slam, so like you know, st strong is relative, isn't it? <laughs> also, exceptionally, I mean, yeah, um, exceptionally weak to fire as well. Um, to the extent that they have a unique animation when they are lit on fire. Um, yes, that's true. So here we are with another grace, heading down the length of the ravine. Here, there's a golden seed along the way and some giant land squirts. Now these behave almost identically to the small ones and. A bit of a unique interaction for the land squirts is if you poison them, they explode um, into a big cloud of poison, which means you can actually get some, like, chain detonations going on, which is quite funny. <laughs> if there's enough of them grouped together, you can poison one of them and it kills the entire room full of them. Oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Well, this bit is... It doesn't come this... in handy often, but, you know, It's kind it of crazy. It's crazy how long this run is. And there's... Fuck all in it. Well, we're really not missing items. Speed it up in the edit. <laughs> there is nothing to miss. So, aye, here we are at the next grace. Well, so that's the Smith and Stone 5. Important. Uh, there, is a, there, is, there is a grace here. But there's also a uh, Scarab here. I think this is an important Ash of War. I might be... I'm uh, probably wrong. Eric wrong? Oh, definitely not important. How the fuck do you remember that? How do I not remember that? Irrelevant. Right, okay, so we're now we're going to the grace. And um Yeah, I mean this bit is price is straightforward. You just It's so hard to commentate on like these bits of the guide. There's nothing to say. But this is it's a long expanse of nothing. <laughs> Aye. Now we can upgrade our um our flask just now. Oh, okay, so we are running up. Okay, I thought this was like right at the end. Okay, so yeah, um, we we'll just grab that grace. There's just so much nothing in this area, which is a shame because this is one of the cooler parts of the world map. I think I really like this area visually. But uh, aye, it's very so, spooky looking. I do like it. Aye, so we're running back, and now we're going up this sort of land ramp, I suppose, and this is going to take us up to. Um, remember that little shortcut bit that we we went to. Uh, we kind of jumped on the stone pillar to the bit we said you can't get to yet. And then we kind of dropped down to it. This is taking us up to that bit. Which I would Along the way, as, we're uh, going to run into a merchant as well. And this one's kind yes. of important. Because this one has a cookbook. And critically sells those bewitching branches. Now, we picked a couple up in the Weeping Peninsula. Yep. But if you hadn't picked those up, you can get some here. And they can be used to cheese a pretty tough late game boss. Yes, um, yes. You might so have caught save a them until that. there on the left. Save them until that boss. But yeah, that's here there. But we'll deal with that in the next episode, which is the top right of Leonia. So North Leonia, I guess. Now we're upgrading our flask because we've got the stuff. And that is it for part 10 of the Ultimate Guide to Elden Ring. And okay, there we go. That's Leonia West. Done. Join us in part 11, where we're going to be doing Northern Leonia. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. 
And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.